Multi-solving is finding solutions to climate change that solve other problems at the same time. Sometimes those are health problems, sometimes there are social injustice, sometimes it's the need to adapt to unavoidable climate change or protect food and water sources. Whatever that intersection is, it's also an opportunity to solve two or more problems with the same budget, with the same effort and time, and it's an opportunity to widen the circle of people who are going to show up and use their political power and their voices and their passion to create change. So if we cut carbon emissions, well sure there might be some costs associated with that, but there's also a huge array of benefits that are not counted, not scored in the terminology that the federal government uses. They're not counted and they can be very large. So one of the most exciting themes that we're noticing here at the Paris Climate Talks uh, is the way that people are connecting the dots between climate change and other issues. So in other words, we're really seeing multi-solving as a way of thinking that's permeating not so much the negotiations themselves, which are still 99% focused on carbon, um, but outside of the negotiations, focused on the intersection of carbon and something else. Multi-solving is also a primary driver behind the success that we do see at the Paris Climate Talks. One degree reduction in temperature increase. 37% of that reduction due to the pledge from China, a pledge that was motivated largely by reducing air pollution and capturing a public health benefit. The U.S. pledge, backed up by President Obama's Clean Power Plan, a plan he communicated to the American people about in terms of the health co-benefits, reduction of asthma and respiratory disease. At the conclusion of the Paris talks, the world is going to step forward into two challenges. The first of those is to implement what's already been promised, and the second is to take those promises even further, more decarbonization at a faster rate. For both of those challenges, multi-solving is this huge opportunity, an opportunity to solve other problems, to bring in other constituencies, to move faster further by virtue of broadening our view away from just carbon to including all the multiple co-benefits of climate action. Multi-solving also has a strong ethical dimension. If we keep a narrow focus only on climate change and turn our eyes away from the immediate needs of the people around us, there's an ethical deficit in that kind of a stance. There's people who are hungry today, people who are in poor health today. If we had to choose between addressing those short-term needs and long-term climate needs, that would be agonizing. But the truth is that there are endless opportunities before us to address both of those things at the same time. There is no ethical conflict that we need to face. If we choose the multi-solving path, we're helping the people who need help today and protecting the climate for the future. Here at Climate Interactive, we're going to keep the process going on in these negotiating halls honest. And we're going to invest in multi-solving because so many people around the world underestimate the immediacy, the scale, and the huge economic value in multi-solving and multiple benefits. Our tools and processes can really help. Finding those synergies, finding the ways to accomplish solutions to more than one problem at the same time, it's essential, it's unavoidable. People are starting to do it and we have to get even better at it.